If you want to discover the secrets of what elite entrepreneurs and marketers did to achieve the next level of success, then this channel is definitely for you. Hey, I'm Daniel Das and I'm the coach and founder of Voice Warriors and I just want to thank you for clicking on this video. Voice Warriors Radio is where we interview these experts about their secret frameworks, strategies, tips and how we can implement it right away in our lives and business. So stay tuned till the end of this video because I have an awesome gift that I would like to give to you. Enjoy and I'll see you in a bit. He is a content creation master. I really love him so much for that especially. And he has helped so many entrepreneurs and marketers to work on their business instead of in their business, right? And so he's a, also a host of an amazing game show called the X and O's Game Show. And so today, without further ado, let us put our hands and welcome the one and only Jim Beer. What's up? <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Thank so as you know, today's uh, topic, we are going to be talking about how to overcome the fear of camera, which a lot of entrepreneurs are introverts or even those extroverts, but they are still shy to come above uh, on the camera and, you know, do uh, recording live or recording videos, right? And you are the video sales guy, right? And also, we're going to talk about how to discover our voice. So maybe... For start, could you just share a little bit of your backstory on how you got started and how you got here right now to be the video sales guy? Absolutely. I'd love to. So I worked in the uh, CGI world. So making computer graphics images that look hopefully so real that you don't know the difference between what's real and what's not. And I did that for 15 years. Wow. And... Uh, it just got to feeling like you're, you know, your cog in a machine kind of a thing. You know, you, you put your heart and soul into something and I'm sure your, your listeners can relate to that. You know, you just, you put everything you got into it and it goes into the next part of the pipeline and then you don't hear about it again for months. And then months later you have someone that you've never met before <laughs> accepting an award for your hard work. And it's like, keep up the great work team, winky face. And it just feels <laughs> empty just completely empty. So mm -hmm. I was like, I was looking and searching at the time and I discovered like everybody else, Russell Brunson. And uh, that got me into the whole deep, <laughs> deep dive of uh, click funnels. And from that point, it was like, man, I could do this. You know, it gave me the, the thought that I could do this, the confidence in myself. So I kept working because, you know, you got to keep the steady income coming in you got to do what you got to do to get where you want to get and the pandemic hit and when the pandemic hit i knew it was a very special situation people were locked in their homes and uh it's just starving for content and entertainment really mm -hmm. so i was going to start a podcast called pale faster which i still intend on starting at some point uh talking about the power of failure and how it's actually a good thing you know, that when people talk about their successes, that's really just the tip of the iceberg. It's built on a mountain of failure and uh, how important that is to give yourself permission to fail. And I was like, you know what? I don't think the pandemic needs that right now. I think they need something bizarre, weird and entertaining. So that started a, a thought process for me and then at the same time, all these entrepreneurs were like giving away so many amazing things. So being so generous, 90% off, 95% off, take a scratch strategy call, steal this from me, do all the things. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. But I know if you guys are like me, that what happens when you don't pay for something? You don't pay attention. Mm -hmm. it does, it's not worth it to you because there was no value exchange. It's just here, take this amazing thing. And what does it do? It collects dust in your Google Drive, in your Gmail. You might not even log into the thing ever because you don't value it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what if they earned it? And that sentence is what started this whole process is the sentence. What if they could earn it in some way? Maybe they value it more and they use it and hopefully mm -hmm. it could change their lives in some positive way. So how do you earn something online? I got to the place of game show. 
So I was like, oh, it'd be cool to have a live game show online. Like, can you imagine a game show rolling through your Facebook feed that's live that you can participate in? That would be bizarre. And that's what I wanted. I wanted it to be bizarre, weird, engaging, and fun. So I dove into YouTube, went real deep dive, and found Dungeons and Dragons players all playing around the, the center. And it was all live feeds, and they were taking comments from the audience. And I was like, oh, my God, this is it. I can use this to do what I want to do. I, all the elements are here. So then I dove into each one of their content. I discovered the person that made the show. And I got to know what I didn't know, which is the terminology I need to search to be able to create this thing. And so now I just ferociously start throwing things together. And while I'm doing that, I know myself, I need a deadline. I need a wall that I have to run up against to motivate myself. So I told all my family and friends, hey, Friday, we're jumping on this weird show I made. They're like, what's that? I'm like, don't worry about it, just show up. <laughs> <laughs> and they did. Uh, so I'm just throwing all these graphics together and it was a mess. It wasn't organized. It was just chaos, but it was fun. So Friday rolls around two ish hours before the show was meant to go live. I tried testing zoom because I was using zoom to gather all the people. We gather 12 people together, including myself for every single episode of X's and O's game show, oh. which is a logistical mm -hmm. craziness. Mm -hmm. um, so zoom is with my collector. That's where I gather all the video feeds and Streamlabs OBS at the time didn't accept zoom. So I built the entire show in something that I, it wouldn't work. So I had to rebuild the show in an hour. Wow. <laughs> Before we went live, wow. we built the whole thing. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So it was even more shaky than it already was because I just like was rushing. And we went through the show. Everything broke. <laughs> Everything went nuts. Videos got big. I got kicked down oh, for being a, a contestant. And like it was nuts. But after it gets done, I've got the pit sweat going. <laughs> and I'm just nervous. And I'm like, oh, my God, what have I done? What did I do? What have I done? And as I'm sitting there, just like absorbing my embarrassment, uh, messages just start coming in like crazy on Messenger. Well, that's weird. Because at this point, I was used to maybe getting like one or two a week. Tonight, I got like 30. Um, and it was of people saying, that's the most fun I've had since the pandemic started. Don't ever um, stop. This is so much fun. Okay, well, gather my confidence together and get, you know, clean myself up, dust myself off and fix the issues I knew were issues. And this time I was like, let's go for broke. Let's get a name. So I was like, no harm, no foul. Maybe they won't even respond. I go, Marley Jacks, will you come on this weird, bizarre show that I've created in a fever dream? And she, she goes, yeah, can you show me an example? So I send her episode one in all of its chaos. And she goes, oh, my God, this is so much fun. Yes, I'm in. Um, and I'll be um, forever thankful for her for doing that because that started mm -hmm. a chain reaction. And she goes, only one caveat. Can I bring a friend? I was like, yeah, you bring whoever you want. I don't care. She brought another big name in the space. So now it's all leverage because I go, Marley Jacks, this other big name's coming on. Do you want to come on? I filled the show in two hours. Wow. And it just, I kept leveraging my last win. Now, mind you, they got on the show. Everything broke again. Big videos, little videos. You, uh, someone's talking. You can't see them. I'm like craziness all over the place. <laughs> but again, I had all these people. And now some names are messaging me going, what was that? <laughs> that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And they're like, how'd you do this? You know, they start asking questions. How'd you get Marley? How long has this show been going on? Because they assume because I got Marley on that the show has been running for a long time. I was like, that's episode two. <laughs> and Easy. yeah, so all these messages come in. People are having so much fun. Marley sent me this beautiful uh, audio that I still listen to every once in a while just to kind of 
get my mind back in it is she was like, that's the coolest thing I've ever done. And you got to keep doing this forever. <laughs> it's, it's so much fun. I was, oh my God. Okay. So, you know, and you just rinse and repeat, fix the problems, dump, jump back in. And I got really quick at fixing problems live. And it built this audience that was like raving fans. And I, it gave me leads weekly. We started getting sponsorships and it launched me. It launched me into this world in a really huge way that I was not ready for. <laughs> and uh, it was a wild ride and I loved it every second of it. And I've created other shows since then. And now we create live shows for others. Wow. Wow. That's that's a really amazing, incredible story, I would say. And yeah, I mean, Mali Tex, she she's just so real because I had her on my show previously as well. And she's just real being so pure. And and yeah, I mean, it was such an awesome time to have her. Shout out to Marley. Yeah, shout out Mali. <laughs> and when you when you mentioned the pandemic, I really feel that the pandemic has somehow helped or somehow pushed us mm. to really go forward and and you know find something positive or something uh, great so right. that we can do something with our lives and 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 it, uh, there's a lot of people like you know I, I just just want to share this as well a lot of entrepreneurs that uh, say that oh the pandemic is so bad but they didn't see the other side of it where the pandemic actually helped us or pushed us to the edge and pushed us down to where we have to just pick up ourselves and walk and start doing things. And that really, what, what you just shared, your story and how yeah. you came out with all the podcasts, it's really amazing. Thank you for sharing that, man. It was super interesting too, is it showed people what we were missing, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. You know, we work these nine to five jobs. In most cases, it's much more than a nine to five. And yeah. you don't realize what you miss out on. So like I would get home from work after driving an hour or some, in some cases to get home, we'd rush through dinner with the kids and then they'd have to go to bed mm -hmm. and, or we'd have uh, an activity to get to and you need to rush, 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 rush. And now that I'm home, I can do more. I can be more a part of their lives. And it's like, it's, you don't know yeah. what you don't know that you're missing. So I think it showed the world what we were missing and it's really hard to go back now yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> that's so true even even you know and the pandemic hit and just um after like eight or nine months my boy was born and i was yeah. like oh my gosh I, I got to go to work and and not spend my time with him you know that kind of thing and i was like come on i'm got to do this and that's how voice warriors got born as well and yeah. and yeah that's that's an amazing that's thing beautiful that happened. man yeah thanks man and and so with that being said right thank you for sharing your story um how what the question is right now is how do people overcome the fear of camera what is the one strategy that you came across because there are a lot of other strategies right out there but sure. what is the one strategy that you came across that uh, helped you overcome it and definitely would help our audience today yeah so there's not just one luckily there's many yeah Myself, my first live ever was my first episode of X's and O's game show. I don't recommend that. But if you're a personality <laughs> type like me to where you have to be kind of like pushed in a corner with no mm. options, that's how I operate. And that's where I shine is I got to make it happen. It has to happen. I've made promises. I'm going to let people down. If I can put myself in that position, I'll rock it every time. But not everyone's like that personality type to where, you know, you do true. that. So there's some tricks I picked up along the way. And one is talk to one person. Just one. So if I'm a funnel builder and I recently helped somebody on a one-on-one -on -one call with funnel building and they enjoyed it and they got value out of it, I'm talking to them. To that one person. We'll call them Bob. So in my mind, as I'm speaking, I'm talking to Bob because I could actually help him out or Susan, you know, for the other side. So I help Susan out. I know I can help her. She's probably going to end up being my ideal client. I'm going to just talk to one. And that helps to take the pressure off 
because we, we, we get the fear. Once that little camera turns on or the light turns on, you can tell it's recording. We kind of go, what did I do? I messed up. I shouldn't have done this. This is crazy. They're going to think I suck. Yeah. They're going to think I look stupid. They're going to think I'm too this, too much that, too little this, not enough that. And we start coming up with rational, 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 trying to, to logic ourselves out of doing it. Yeah. But it helps when we can focus on one. So that would be where I would start. And to take it even a step further, if you can print out a physical picture of that person and tape it behind your your webcam, your camera, your phone, it helps to visually connect that you're talking to one person, Bob or Susan in our case. Um, and then you can kind of just phase everything out, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. The other thing is being prepared. So being prepared, what do I mean? Does that mean you have to script every video? No, no. But know in your mind the the arc you want to take for your content what you want to mm -hmm. say how you want to say it and then maybe have some bullet points to kind of give you breadcrumbs to find your way to the end because mm -hmm. one of the scariest parts about live video is what do i talk about you know i'm going to have dead air and i'm just going to be blankly staring at the camera and people are going to judge me so have a plan. Know what you want to talk about. And by all means, please make it valuable to the people that you want to speak with. Okay. And anything else is really just practice. There's a lot of things you can do to get yourself more comfortable, right? So I can record a video on my phone and never show it to anybody. Mm -hmm. That's, That's my right. That's my choice. It's, I have this little video recorder in my pocket at all times. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so before you go live, just make some videos. Just get the, the jitters out, you know? And if you're in a group, if you're in a coaching program, like, um, you know, Daniel Das's program, and, you know, there's numerous programs out there that will allow you to go live in the group. Go live in there. It's a safe place. Those are people that want to see you successful. They're supportive. They're going to give you feedback that's constructive, not negative. And uh, try it out. You can also go live to only yourself. There's an option to just go live for yourself. No one sees it but you. So you can go from phone to live to yourself to live in a, you know, a closed off group until you work your way up to being live on your profile. And I'd recommend before you go live on your profile that you interview somebody in a group. And that helps to take the stress off. Well, what do I talk about, Jim? I'll tell you. Okay. So what is your goal? What do you want to accomplish this week? And what do you need to do to get there? Okay, so or, or what's your goal? What do you need to do to get there? What are you doing this week to get there to contribute to it? And then you switch halfway through the interview, you switch and then they ask you the same questions. Oh. Now, when you first get on, you're going to have the jitters and that's okay. Because the minute you guys get into a conversation, everything else phases out. And you just realize you're just talking to a human being. Yes, you're live. But you forget that wonderfully <laughs> once you get into a conversation with somebody. And it's a great transition from going live by myself, which can be a little scary, to now with somebody else. And then now that next step would be you going live in your profile. Mm -hmm. So it's a stair step. And we take baby steps to get there. And once you get there, you realize that all the things you were afraid of really don't exist no that is incredibly a lot of value there <laughs> jim really that, that that was so cool i mean the three steps that you mentioned as so what's your goal what do you do this week and how do you do to accomplish this and that, that's really uh, an awesome simple way that you know to overcome the fear of camera and that's that's really amazing guys if you are not taking down notes take your pens and paper and your notepad or whatever it is 
get this golden value down here, golden nuggets, <laughs> I'll say. And so basically, Jim, you you have also answered my next question, right? So when when because I understand when when entrepreneurs or when whoever comes on live or, or do a video recording, they, they they will like they will be like, okay, let's do this. I'm here. Okay, start off now live. And while in the middle of their life, they, they go blank or they go stuck because of sure, their business, sure, right? Sure. right? <laughs> what is the, the best tip? Well, I think that was the best tip, right? That you mentioned the tree. Or do you have something else on top of that to help people, you know, uh, to, I'll, to I'll help tell you, them with that? whenever you get stuck, it's that's when it's like crucial to have bullet points. Yes. Because you just, you just go, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm back in like, so that's, that's as much uncomfortability as there is. It's just like, um, yes. anyway. Yeah. So the next topic yeah. is, yeah. And you just jump right back in or, uh, another thing that helps is to clap just okay. to clap. And that's what video oh. editors, we ask people when they're filming to clap to, so we know where to cut because okay. you can see the sound wave. But what it also does is an, it's an attention reset. Oh. So oh. when I do that, all right. So back at it and you just jump right back in. Hmm. So I like to use that on occasion. I used it more so when I first started. And when I was editing my own videos, it helped as well because hmm. I could see the sound wave spike and I would just know, all right, cut right there. That was where I kind of needed a second. And it's fine. The beautiful thing about live I've had my, my kids run through. <laughs> I've had the little one just like, <laughs> she's, she's hilarious. She'll just kind of like. <laughs> That's so cute. Creep in and she's hilarious. And then eventually she joined me on a bunch of shows. And, you know, she participated nice. and other people bring their kids on. You know, sometimes you'll hear background noise. My dogs will mm -hmm. flip out if they see a squirrel or a leaf that they think is alive. And, yeah. you know, you just like, oh, well, leaf, you know, and you just make light of it. It's fine because <laughs> life happens. If someone yeah. got bothered enough by that to where they were like, never working with him, I don't want to work with them because that's, that's just me that's my life and if someone was like oh you have your child on i'd never want to ever work with them ever so that's a beautiful thing the internet's a big place go play <laughs> you know that's the way i feel <laughs> that's about so it. good that's you so know? good man because yeah, you're that's the really best true. content not only attracts the people you want to work with but more importantly mm -hmm. it pushes away the people you don't want to work with mm. oh. That's beautiful. Because That's how sweet. many people in the audience want to work with their worst case scenario client every day? Show of hands. Oh, nobody? <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so if you can build that into your content, beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Because like I said, the internet's a big place. Go go find something else to do. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. There are definitely people who wants to have their dogs, their children, they, they, are, they, are, they are part of their life in mm -hmm. the videos that they show or their lives that they go on to. Even when you mentioned your dogs, you know, see the squirrel, even my little one, my little dog as well. If you knock on the door just three times, she will start to bark. Yeah, <laughs> she won't give you nuts, right? Yeah. yeah. So, and then just normal and life, like you say, life happens and that's how we, we roll. And those are the people who are okay with our lives that way. Those are the people that we want to serve. Not those who say, no, I don't like that and stuff. Yeah, that's really awesome. And the clapping part, that's really good. That's so good. You know, and just a little really, tension reset. Because sometimes, yeah. you know, like uh, so I've learned a lot from watching my stepdaughter play softball. And one of the cool things is when a pitcher gets like in their head too much and they start throwing crazy pitches they have the catcher go up and talk to the pitcher and what do they say she tells them a joke just a crazy silly joke why attention reset get them out of their mm -hmm. own head bring them back in the game so same thing it's just a quick little attention reset heads back in the game wow wow that's just beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. 
Tim. And so let's go into the second part of today because you have shared a lot of golden nuggets right there on overcoming the fear of the camera. And so when we, when it comes to discovering our voice, right, mm -hmm. there are a lot of definitions out there. Maybe you could share your own personal de definition on what is it like to discover our voice? What's the real definition of it? Maybe could you just share from yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a common misconception that it's like an event. They're like, oh, March 27th, that was the day I found my voice. Like, no, no. I'm still finding my voice. Steve Ooh. Larson's still finding his voice. Marley Jacks, Russell Brunson, Daniel Das is still finding their voice. We just got to the point to where we're comfortable in that search, Ooh. if that makes sense. So it's, you never find it. It's a growing living thing. That's always adapting to what your market needs from you. What part of your personality do they resonate with? Do you pretend to be someone you're not? No, don't ever do that because we're in the age of authenticity and attention. Mm -hmm. So if you're not being authentic and you're trying to be somebody else or represent yourself as something you're not, the audience will know it immediately and it will detract them. It will push them away. There That's are awesome. people out there that need you, not anybody else, you. What makes your, think of it this way, okay? You become a funnel builder and you offer funnel building as a service. What separates you from every other funnel builder? Your offer? Maybe. Yeah. But really, but not, it's nothing you. Much, you know, it's yeah. you. That's what separates you, is you. Your unique yeah. perspective, your experience, your journey, and your network of what you've been exposed to. You're a blend of everything you've been exposed to that is unique. There's no one quite like you. So if someone wants to get funnel services from you, they buy you before they ever buy your service wow. because they resonate with you. I sell, you know, video content. I am one of millions that do this. What separates me from everybody else? My unique experience, my journey, my network, and my personality, who I am authentically. There are people that do not like my personality and that's okay because there's literally a million others that to choose from that will be a better fit for them. Exactly. But for the people that like me, my, my, like my personality, like my content, like what I can give to them, like my offer, it's a perfect fit for both sides. So finding your voice, I would argue that there's no such thing as actually definitively finding your voice. I love it. It's a journey and it never ends. I love it. I love that. That is really awesome because that's that's where I stand as well, you know. When, when, because basically on Voice Warriors, right, we, we are here to impact lives, discover our voice, share our message and impact lives. So we are on the constant journey of a discovery yeah. to discover our voice, right? And, and that's really so, so good. And so with that being said, Jim, how can we discover our voice? That's really what it comes down to is practice. And what I mm -hmm. subscribe to heavily is Steve Larson. Steve Larson said that he just started to figure out what his market wanted from him when he hit episode 100. Yeah. So don't even think about like resting in or residing on a voice or a direction for a voice until you've hit a hundred episodes or something. I think that's, that's, that's the way to go. I truly believe yeah. that he's right on that. And I have not seen anything to the contrary yet. Um, you know, I did, I think it ended up being 26 episodes of X's and O's game show with 12 people per show. So a lot. 
Um, and even after all that, I don't know what my voice is. I know what people liked from me. So I have a direction, but it's not definitive, you know, like yeah. even lifelong hosts, you know, Alex Trebek's and, you know, people like that, people on news that have been around for 30 years, they still try stuff out. To this day, they still try stuff out. So it's like, I think that instead of worrying about it, enjoy the process. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And try new stuff. Don't be afraid to try new things. And again, don't be something you're not. Just show people different aspects of your personality and see what they resonate with. Yeah. Yeah. That's really true. And when and I remember what you just said, I mean, earlier on, you said that you no, know, we have to fail faster, right? Because if we don't fail faster, we will never succeed, right? So it's always good to fail faster to suck, then you get the opportunity to succeed earlier. And and yeah, I feel that's really awesome. <laughs> My favorite teacher I ever had, his name was Gary Larson. Larry Larson, excuse me. Larry Larson, okay. Larry Larson. And he was my art teacher for animation. And he told me one day, and I don't think he ever thought, he's no longer with us, he's passed on, but I don't think he ever thought that what he said would resonate with me as much as it did. I've held on to it ever since. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know, how do I, how do I get attention? Because I hadn't had my first job in the industry yet. So I was like, how do I get attention and get people's attention to get me uh, hired on? And he mm -hmm. goes, yeah, I can see that you're someone that needs definitive answers. He goes, there are none. And he goes, to be truly successful, you have to triple your failure rate. Wow. I was like, what are you talking about? You know, because we're raised of like, you know, failure is bad. You know, we want to talk about the successes. And he's like, mm -hmm. no, triple your failure rate and you will find success. Wow. Like I carried it ever since. Oh, that's just beautiful. And I just remembered, you know, Hope. She posted this post just earlier, oh. I think, about, yeah. And she, she said something like, nobody posts their failures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nobody posts their failures. Well, everyone posts their successes. But how much failure have they gone through to post that, that success? It's, you know, it's incredibly it's interesting failure. about that for just a moment. Yeah. We, we one of the big arguments we put in our mind is I won't do this until mm. and that's a dangerous phrase. And the reason it's dangerous is twofold. Mm. One, you're always going to raise that bar. Always. That bar is going to keep going higher and higher and you're never going to do it. Mm -hmm. The other thing is you are separating yourself from the audience you're trying to help. So. Think of it this way, you know, you got this person who's been super successful standing on top of the mountain, looking down at you and saying, it's awesome up here. Come on up. And you're looking up at a flat rock face, no idea how to get up there. And you're just barking at me from the top saying, it's amazing up here. Come check it out. You've separated yourself from the very people you're trying to help. So instead what I suggest is you come back down or you come all the way down and help them with you do it together. Give the, uh, not the appearance, but the experience of I'm on the same plane or I understand where you're at. Meet them where they are, meet them in their pain. So when we say I'll do, won't do this until we're actually waiting until we're further separated from the very audience we want to help. Like Russell Brunson. Russell Brunson stepped down recently. Why did he do that? <laughs> because people can't relate to a billionaire. So he takes a step back and he lets the people he's trained now take the limelight because they're people we can relate to. Hmm. That's so true. Wow. It has been an awesome journey with you, Jim. I really appreciate 
your time here. And I mean, I understand as well that you have an awesome group to share, which is yes, called the Visibility yes. Hackers. Could you just share a little bit about that? Absolutely. So in our industry, it's crucial mm -hmm. to get attention, to get known quickly, to have people, not, not just to have you know others, but more importantly, to be known by others as being the person in your selected niche for your selected service or product. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're first starting out, it's incredibly difficult to get known unless you have certain things in place. So we've come up with systems and strategies and formats to get you known, to make sure that people know that Daniel Das is the voice warrior. Yeah. And if you don't know that, you will soon. So that's what visibility hacking is all about, is getting a spotlight on your mission and your message so that you can spread it with the world and help more people. That's just amazing. So guys, there you go. The link is there. I'll drop the link in the comments as well. You can go to facebookgroup.com forward slash group forward slash visibility hackers and join that awesome group right there. Jim, once again, thank you so much. One final last one before you go. What are, do you have any final thoughts to let our audience today know before you leave to this session? Sure, sure. And this is something I learned from Hope recently. So Hope Isaac, shout out Hope to you. Hope is amazing. Hope shout is absolutely out. incredible. <laughs> um, I was trying to teach Hope about live shows and doing that kind of a thing. And she was rocking it. She was doing a great job. But she resonated more with copyright and with audio. Mm. And it, it's just sometimes you need a reminder that we absorb things differently. Mm. So no matter what you're comfortable with, get out there and get loud about it. If you're an amazing copywriter, put out amazing copy. Let people know, let people see it. If you're an amazing live presence or amazing person on video, get out there, let people see it, be consistent. That's crucial, consistency is crucial. And if you are someone that rocks with audio and that's something you better resonate with or it's easier to create, do that. If you love TikTok, make TikToks. It doesn't matter as long as you're being consistent and you're getting in front of people that don't know who you are on a frequent basis, you will be able to grow. So it doesn't matter if it's video, audio, text, if you're just shouting at malls, whatever it is, just make sure you're consistent and make sure that you're letting people know who you are and who you serve. Wow, that's really awesome. And that's... Mind blowing. Team, get loud. I remember that. <laughs> so just get loud and let's get crazy. Hey, Daniel here again. And I just want to thank you for watching this video. And like I promised, I would like to give you an awesome gift. But before that, did you know the fastest way to reach the next level in your online business is not by cracking your head for ideas, going live every day on social media and all that? The fastest way we discovered is by interviewing experts that are in the niche that you're in. What I mean by that? Have you heard of this phrase where your network is your net worth? I'm sure you did, but if you have not, hear me out for a second. The real question is, how do we connect with these elite entrepreneurs and marketers? It took me a while to understand this, but with a lot of researching and studying, I finally discovered that most of them have this one pattern in common. Most of them started their entrepreneurship journey by asking or interviewing experts before they became one. And that's why having an interview show is so powerful. It does not only connect you with these experts, but it also builds your authority, trust and credibility with your audience and they will be willing to buy your offer without hard selling. Amazing, right? So here is my awesome gift to you. If you're looking to connect with your dream experts with a powerful interview show, I have this special short training that will help you with all the strategies that you need to launch one. All you have to do is click the link in the description and that will direct you to my free group 
where the free training is. Over there, you'll be able to connect with me and ask me any questions that you have and also join me in live interview session that is ongoing every single month. You will be able to find other free trainings that are in there that will help you in your entrepreneurship journey as well. Hope you enjoy it and I can't wait to see you in there. Once again, thank you so much. Till the next one, I'm Daniel Das signing up. Goodbye for now.